In this video, I'll show you perhaps the best and also simplest way to extract and then use a node graph database. So we'll use a particularly simple yet super effective method to do this. And I'll take you through the entire process of preparing your data, extracting it into a node graph database, storing that database, and then bringing it all back and being able to query that data and use this information to generate a response from an LLM. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. To follow along, you'll need this entire code base and particularly this Jupyter notebook over here. So I've made that available via the link on the screen right now. You can download this complete code and it has all the code that you'll need to prepare the data, convert it to a graph database, and then actually use it to generate responses using a querying model later on. So go ahead and visit that link, get this resource, and then you'll be able to follow along with the rest of the video. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and kick things off right here at the beginning, uh, where you can see that we're actually setting up our connection to our Neo4j database. Now, this specific database that I'm using is stored on Neo4j's Aura, which is a free, fully managed database solution that enables you to host the kind of databases that we need to use. For this particular case, that's super important because we'll need to actually store our data in there and then use their managed systems to actually query our database. So let's head over to Aura, create a free database, and then we can get this information. So what you'll need to do is head over to Aura, which is available at consolepreview.neo4j.io. And this will log you in, ask you to create an account. Once you have an account created, you can go ahead and create your free Neo4j database in there. So I'll wait for mine to load up right here. Once you have your database, it will look like something of this sort. All you need to do is hit connect, and then you want to select the drivers solution. This shows you the different drivers that are available for your database. Now, once you're done creating your database, it will prompt you to generate a secrets file. So this will look something like this, and it will contain all the information that you need to connect to your Neo4j database. So you will need to bring that information back into an environment file. And all we need here is the URI, username, and password, although it will have some additional information. So what we're doing over here is we're creating a Neo4j graph connection, and this connects us to the remote Neo4j database that we already have. And as you'll see later on, we'll use that to actually upload information to the database. So for now, once you've added your credentials, you can go ahead and run that specific cell. You should get a successfully connected message if that connection is actually successful. So the next big part is now preparation of your data. And the very first thing that you need to do is to actually get your data into your Python code base. In this case, I'm going to use this Elizabeth the first example over here. This is simply a Wikipedia article. And you can see I'm using the Wikipedia loader to actually read that information into raw documents that I'll store in my memory as I work with this code. But your situation is very likely to be different. So say for instance, you have your information in in a PDF file, you can use a PDF file loader over here to actually load the documents from that PDF. Now, in the case of a slightly different but still very similar scenario, we tend to have folders that contain PDFs that we want to load. And thankfully, Langchain has a directory loader over here that you can very easily use to just load all the PDFs. You can specify the file format over here that you're loading PDFs, and you can use the PDF loader to actually run through all PDFs in a specific folder and then load them all in so that you can use them to generate your graph later on. You can also generate information from a web page. So say for instance, you're doing some advanced web scraping on a company that you work for or something, and you can load information from a CSV as well. So you can see how that's done over here. And I'll leave all this code still available within the link that showed up on the screen earlier. It's also available in the description. And if you need to read examples that are not here, you need to take a look at this Langchain community. So the document loaders library is super helpful, and it provides a bunch of tools that enable you to read so much information and use that information directly within the Langchain system, as you'll see, we'll be doing that later on. And in this case, we'll use whatever information you have, whatever is just take a look here and try to see if you can find a loader you could do a github file loader and whatnot if you can find a loader for it here we can definitely use that information while building our graph database so once you've found the right way to load your data it's now time to token split that data so in this code we're using a token splitter so you can set the chunk size over here and the chunk overlap to whatever you want and uh, that just helps the model know exactly how to split your data and in our specific situation since this is actually a test i'm only going to load the final three documents over here but what you can do is you can actually just leave that in there and just load the entire document set. So when we go ahead and split this document, we'll get a list of documents. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And now it's finally done extracting. For me in particular, and it probably has nothing to do with my internet, it takes a very long time to extract these documents. So I'll just go ahead and run a cell over here to expose these documents. But it did take roughly one minute and 20 seconds to extract this document. If you're doing it on PDFs or maybe CSVs or something that's remote, whatever it is, usually will take a very long time. So in this next cell over here, I've provided functions to help you actually save the results from your document extraction so that you don't need to constantly load them if you don't do this extraction in one single step. Once you're done extracting your data, what you want to come over here and do is actually run the save documents to JSON function over here that I've provided. So what you want to do is just leave this part uncommented and it's going to go ahead and save your documents to a JSON file. Now, if you come back in the future and you just want to load your documents, you can simply just comment out this line and uncomment this one. And if you run this line, you can see it takes a very short period of time to load 
and you still have the exact same documents that you saved earlier so that you're ready to continue with the rest of the extraction so now we're done with the data preparation we can now move on to actually extracting that data and that's exactly what this next cell does over here so i'll run through this really quickly not because it's particularly complicated but because it's probably the most important part of this entire extraction so let's go ahead and do that right now so it's worth looking into with quite a bit of detail now listen if you've been thinking about building an ai project or if you're already building one and need assistance from the right talent to be able to take your project to the next level be sure to reach out using the very first link in the description or by contacting me directly via the email that i'll leave in the description as well we've enabled multiple clients to bring their ai projects to life and i'm sure we can do exactly the same for you so don't hesitate to reach out with that out of the way let's go ahead and resume with the video so in this specific part we're simply creating a new llm that's going to be managed by langchain so it's a chat open ai llm but then we're converting that llm depending on the settings that you have over here into an llm graph transformer so then what we can do is we can use the convert to graph documents over here and just feed in the documents that we extracted earlier in here to actually retrieve fully converted graph documents now i just want to be super clear the documents that are extracted over here are the actual graph documents so they contain nodes and relationships that represent the data that you extracted from your documents earlier and before we get into why that's tricky the final step over here is we call the graph that we connected to earlier so the one that we had at the top over here if i can scroll to it fast enough the one that we connected to over there so we call that and then we just say add graph documents we pass in the graph documents we set this best entity label to true and then we include the sources that we use to actually generate that document data because that's actually included within the document data that we have over here you can see we have the page content and whatnot before we move on it's worth focusing on this specific part over here and this part is both the beautiful and ugly of doing things in this specific way so the beauty with this is that we can extract an entire neo4j graph system from our data using just a single line of code right now what's not so good about it is that we don't have a lot of control over how this data is extracted so you can see for example we're not including system instructions instructions to tell the model how to extract the data usually you might want to do that so to overcome this problem it's worth taking a look at this llm graph transformer documentation over here that gives you a little bit of guidance on how to modify how the model extracts your data in here particularly with the parameters we are allowed to pass in an instance of a large language model that supports the structured output now i just want to point out that this base large language model does support a system instruction so if you want to add information within the system instruction that helps the model to particularly extract the data in the way that you want to do it then in that case you can pass that directly to the large language model and it will persist as it's transformed into an llm graph transformer you can also enter a list of allowed nodes and allowed relationships and this helps you to specify what kind kind of nodes and relationships you expect back from the model now the most important part over here is the prompt so you can pass in an optional chat prompt template which will be passed to the model with additional instructions in this case these are instructions that help the model to extract the nodes and relationships within your data but if you pass this information in it means that you can give the model specific information and exactly how you want it to extract the nodes and relationships it's sometimes assumed that the information will have the nodes and relationships clearly outlined but that's not always the case sometimes you want a model to do something really smart with the data and so this allows you to do that and so once you're sure that you can extract the graph documents in the way that you want to do it you can proceed to this step of actually adding them to your neo4j database and then proceeding with that and so once you're done with that you essentially have the data uploaded to neo4j you can go ahead and take a look at the aura setup that you should have you should see something of this sort you can go ahead and connect to it and query it and in the query interface like this you should be able to see the list of different node types that you have so you can see i have a bunch of stuff over here and the different relationships that you have within your data so you can see the different daughter relationships that i have desired relationship uh, connections that i had over here and you can start to take a look at that data for anybody that's worked with graph databases in the past you will know that this is a super fast process to getting to this point usually it takes significantly longer to get to this point now as an aside for the next cell we want to take a look at vector indexes now graph databases are an alternative to vector indexes because they help us to form connections between different pieces of data quite easily compared to vector indexes but a vector index sometimes will still contain the full information information of the document and this might be useful what you might want to set up is actually a multi-step model and i'll show you how to do that later on in the video but if you set up a multi-step model that initially starts by querying the graph database uses the information and insights that it gains from the graph database to then move on to query a vector index database you will have significantly better results and this is an agentic way of extracting this information so we might talk about that later on in the video but for now i just want to point out that you can actually create a vector index from an existing graph this means that you have an index that can be queried using an embedding vector and it can return the actual documents or data that was initially stored within the data that was used to create that graph we won't be going 
going into too much detail on that in this specific video maybe i'll do a video in the future on that but i just wanted to point it out just so you know um exactly what's going on so now we need to move on to the next step which is actually querying the data and using it in a response and i just want to point out the outline of the process that we're going to be following because in this video i'll present it in reverse just because you need to write the tools before you can actually use them so the process that we're going to be following involves using an llm to ingest a question from the user and then using that llm to actually pick out the entities within that question so what specific nodes have been referenced within that question and so how can we query them to actually get that data we then put together a very lenient querying system allowing for misspellings and indirect references to certain entities because keep in mind the model that's going to be performing these database queries is not the same model that actually prepared this graph database so it doesn't know what nodes are available so using a lenient query we can actually get a lot of information just feed that back to the model and then tell the model to generate a response based on that data and so the very first part of this process involves actually ingesting a question and then identifying what nodes have been talked about in that specific question and so we're going to stay away from using langchain for this specific case because we don't really need to do it and if you've watched my videos in the past you'll know that i don't really like to use libraries if i don't really have to so let's go ahead and get rid of that langchain code over there what we're doing first is specifying a pydantic mode over here that takes in a list of strings where each string is a name of an identity so say you ask the question like what time does bob go to work every single day we need a model to be able to extract the nodes or identities within that question which might be something like bob and work and so this specific class over here is going to house that list of those nodes next we're creating a series of messages that's just going to help our entity extraction model to extract the entities within the text so you can see over here all i'm saying you are extracting organization and personal entities from the text that's just fine and then i'm creating a template over here so extract the entities from the following text and then we're passing a question so it's just a template and you can see down here what we're doing is we're actually defining a question to actually now run that prompt through the llm and we are formatting the messages we're keeping the system message the same but then we're actually reading the user question over here and just replacing the question part over here with the text so if you said something like where does bob go to work every single day the input to this model will be something like extract the entities from the following text and then where does bob go to work every single day and you can see here i'm defining a new entity extraction llm just using the open ai chat interface passing in the models over here and then asking it to actually extract that data so i'll save that as a function so that we can actually proceed to use it and then for example i can extract the entities from this question over here you can see pretty much only one entity over there i'll just go ahead and allow it to extract that give it a minute and you can see it just extracts an entities object with a list of names over here and it's just the name of the subject that was being asked about now these two functions over here help particularly with querying data from the database because we're not using vector embeddings to extract information from the database we need to use queries that will return information even when the model didn't ask for that exact information so allowing for a little bit of misspelling and so what we're doing over here is that we're generating a cipher query that's going to be sent over to neo4j allowing for certain misspellings and maybe indirect references to specific information that will still return the information that we actually want from the neo4j database and so bringing this all together the final part of this function is simply this structured retriever so this structured retriever takes in a question it tries to generate the entities within the question and then it generates a query that's going to receive information about those entities from our database so we're going to go ahead and finalize that over here and while i could run this cell over here you can see all it's really going to do is it's just going to retrieve that information to return the information that is within our neo4j database about the specific question that has been asked and so with all that set up we can now move on to what is perhaps the most important part which is actually creating an llm and then giving our graph retriever tool to it as something that it can use to actually extract information so i'm using a custom augmented llm over here which is just a basic llm that has tool use access available to it you can see i'm just running that over here and this is all fully available within the code if you just download it and i'm giving it a system instruction just telling it that it's an assistant that can retrieve information from the database now you notice that i'm setting a bunch of debug flags over here we don't need to worry too much about those but in particular this use react field over here is quite important if we take a look at the augmented llm over here and just take a look at what this use react tool over here does it enables it to use this reasoning and acting prompt and if you've worked with reasoning and acting prompts in the past you know just how important this is it enables the model to think carefully use the tools that are available then think again before producing a response for the user that's going to be super important for us as we might need to query this neo4j database quite a few times before we know that we actually have the data that the user wants to use so with that out of the way we'll go ahead and create that tool quite easily and now we want to actually give it access to the tool so you can see we're giving the tool a name over here of the query knowledge graph just telling it what it does this retrieves information from the knowledge database and then passing in a schema over here telling it the model exactly how to work and we're setting the structured retriever this function over here that handles the full retrieval process for this uh, data from the neo4j database as the handler for when the model calls that specific function 
function. And now for the final part, the most interesting part, we can actually finally get to ask the model a question from the Neo4j database. Now, if you remember this Neo4j database contains information about uh, Queen Elizabeth the first. And so she was she was called Elizabeth the first in the data. I'll keep that consistent with our question. And I'll run this through. Now, as this runs, you'll be able to follow and just see exactly how the model is performing its call. So let's take a look at what it's saying. It says the question is asking about who Elizabeth was born to. That's actually pretty good. It goes ahead and calls the tool. So it says who were the parents of Queen Elizabeth the first. You can see this model is actually quite smart. This is Claude 3.7 to net. It's asking for the parents of Elizabeth the first, which is a really good way to ask this question if you're looking through a uh, in your 4J graph database. So we go ahead and take a look at how this works. You can see that our structured retriever found Elizabeth the first as the only entity within our question, which is actually just fine. It's gone ahead and retrieved the data and it, and it has found 50 relationships, including some about what she was the queen of. But you can see our model's thinking process over here. So it says from the knowledge graphs, I can see information about Elizabeth the first's parents and the relative relationships are Elizabeth the first was the child of and was the daughter of, which is very relevant information. You can see it just presents its final response over here saying, well, Elizabeth was born to King Henry of England and Anne. And then it goes ahead and talks about the rest of the information that it retrieved from the relationships, which is actually quite a bit of information. So that is exactly how you create a super effective knowledge graph for data extraction. Now this can get significantly more complicated depending on how much data you have, but this is the simplest and most effective way that I've found to be able to do this. Now if you've enjoyed this video, if you like videos like this that are straight to the point and super helpful, go ahead and leave me a sub. We're on the way to 2000 subscribers. That would be super helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.